In this video, I will explain how to use the Warp Grid asset for Unity and most of the available features. Warp Grid is a component that acts like a sprite renderer, but allows you to quickly apply some warping to the image directly in the scene view, without any need for creating individual asset files. This can be especially useful if you have a background image and you want to add some variation to it without having to create more textures and without needing to leave the editor. Warp Grid provides a simple grid-based system in which you cut an image into any number of rows and columns. You can then move the points around and change their color using the various provided tools in the scene view. Under the hood, it efficiently generates a triangle mesh for your warped grid, which you can apply any material you like to. Let's have a look at how to actually use the Warp Grid component. Create an empty game object in your scene and add the Warp Grid component to it. It will warn you that you haven't selected a texture yet, so let's do that. I'll choose this rope here. Unsurprisingly, it shows up in the scene view, just like a sprite renderer. Ignoring all the other settings for now, let's click the Edit button at the top. Now we have a totally different view of the inspector. By default, our image has only four grid points, which appear as red or green dots when I hover the mouse over them. Since the drag tool is currently selected, I can left click and drag these four points to warp the image. That's pretty cool, but let's take it a bit further and add more points to the warp grid. In the inspector, I'll expand the resample tool and click set to double a few times to increase the grid resolution. I could also just type in the exact width and height I want into the new width and new height boxes. You can see a preview in red of the new grid in the scene view. I'll click the resample button to apply it. Now if I hover the mouse over the grid, you'll see that there's a lot more red and green dots. Now look what happens when I use the drag tool on these points. You can see that the red-green colour of each dot indicates how much that point will be affected by the brush. You will see that the inspector mentions several shortcuts. When you're in edit mode, all you need to do is hover the mouse over the scene view and press the shortcut key. For example, if I hold down the R key, I can move the mouse left and right to change the radius of the brush without having to touch the inspector. I can also move one point at a time by selecting the point brush in the editor, or even better, by holding down the B key. A pie menu pops up and I can move the mouse over the point brush and let go of B to select it. Now the brush only affects a single point in the grid at a time. The point brush also allows you to set a grid snap spacing or interval, which takes effect when holding down shift. Let's try out the paint tool now by selecting it in the inspector or again by using a pie menu. Press and hold T with the mouse over the scene view and select the paint tool. This lets you change the colour of points in the grid using the same brushes as were provided with the drag tool. Note that this simply sets the vertex colour, which needs to be handled by the shader you are using. By default, Warp Grid uses the sprite's default shader, just like the sprite renderer component, which multiplies or tints the image colour by the vertex colour. This means white vertices make no change to the image colour, and red vertices, for example, erase any green and blue while leaving the red alone. If you hold the control key while painting, it will erase parts of the image by decreasing the value of the alpha channel, and you can un-erase by holding down control and shift together. If I select the edge brush, you will see that it affects all points on the current column or row of points that you are hovering over. I like using this to fade out the entire edge of a background texture to make it seamlessly blend with another instance of the same texture. With this dirt texture here, I can also use the paint tool to make it less repetitive with some simple colour variations. Now let's try out the smooth tool. To demonstrate it, I will use the drag tool to really mess up the grid and create a tangle of points and overlapping triangles that would be very difficult to unravel with the drag tool. Now I'll switch to the smooth tool, and you can see when I brush the vertices they return to a sensible configuration. You can adjust the strength of the smooth tool in the inspector, or by holding down the S key in the scene view, and moving the mouse left for less smoothing, or right for more smoothing. Let's move on to how to create your own grid layout. Often creating a really high resolution grid isn't really what you want, and of course you'll want to avoid having more triangles in the mesh than you need. Warp Grid gives you the ability to cut the image into whatever size columns and rows you'd like. I'll use the resample tool again to bring the resolution of the grid down to 2x2. Two two. Now I'll select the cut tool and hover over an edge of the grid. A preview of the cut will be shown in green. I'll click somewhere on the top edge to create a new column of points, dividing the image into two quads. You can then use the drag tool to warp the two sides of the image in isolation. 
and you can also paint the newly introduced points from the cut. I'll make a few more cuts and switch to the delete tool. I can use the delete tool to merge two columns or rows of grid cells into one. It's basically the opposite of the cut tool. If you make a cut, you can delete it with this tool. Delete has one extra bonus feature though, which is that you can crop the image. Now for the lucky last tool, the nudge tool. I can use this to adjust exactly where on the image a row or column lies. To be precise, it adjusts the UVX coordinate associated with a column, or the UVY coordinate associated with a row in the grid. It's not so easy to explain with words, but as you can see, I can push the texture back and forth between two adjacent columns or rows. Like the delete tool, the nudge tool also lets you adjust cropping on the image by nudging the edges at the sides of the grid. If I use the delete tool to crop the image, I can use the nudge tool to drag the cropped part of the image back into view. In edit mode, we also have access to the subdivide button, which basically doubles the resolution of the grid by adding a new row halfway between all existing rows and a new column between all existing columns. The Align Scene View button is particularly useful when you are using Warp Grid in a 3D scene. It will point the Scene View camera directly at the face of the grid, so you don't have to edit it from an angle. That's all of the Edit Mode features covered, so I'll now exit Edit Mode and go over the available properties. We've already used the Texture property. The Color property just tints the entire mesh at once, like in the Sprite Renderer component, and Sorting Layer and Sorting Order are also the same as in Sprite Renderer. When the material property is not set to anything, the sprites-default material is used, but you can set it to anything you like to render the warped mesh with any material you like. The high quality setting is true by default, which means that each quad in the grid will be populated with four triangles, which results in a much more accurate warping, but if you don't depend on that quality, you can turn it off to use two triangles per quad, halving the number of triangles in the generated mesh. The Reverse Face property doesn't make a difference for the sprite's default material, but some shaders only render one side of a mesh. This will flip the direction of the triangles in the generated mesh in case you want it to render the other way around. You can also easily end up in a situation where the grid is inverted, so the left points are on the right and the right points are on the left, for example. In edit mode, a warning will appear when it determines that this has happened, and a button which you can click to fix the problem. This button literally just checks or unchecks the reverse face property for you. If you require more accurate texture transforms, you can turn up the subdiv slider, at the cost of adding a lot more triangles. If you expand the crop section, you can adjust the overall cropping of the image, regardless of the current grid layout. There's a couple of buttons at the bottom. Generate Collider adds or updates a Polygon Collider 2D component with the outline of the warp grid. And lastly, there's the Refresh button, which hopefully you won't need at all, but in the unfortunate case that the state of the warp grid gets corrupted, you can click Refresh to hopefully bring it back to life again. It basically just checks for common problems I encountered while creating the tool, and does something to try and fix them. Okay, so that's all of the available features of Warp Grid. I hope you can see how it can help with your game creation workflow. Since its inception, I have found many reasons to reach for Warp Grid. It basically provides a simple way to create variations of an image without leaving the editor, and easily create grid-based meshes without having to open up any external 3D software or even create new assets in your project. I'll add a link to the Unity Asset Store in the description of this video. Thanks for watching!